these two Fire Emblem sororities might have found their hero, no pun intended, even though Nero also uses hero, but he really does enjoy playing a lot of different characters, but it is going to be the tried and true, the Ridley, the main, coming through to save him, but starts kind of rough. Yeah, a bit of a scary matchup too, because you know that Roy will absolutely destroy Ridley. Um, th you have to remind, have to remember that Ridley isn't the heaviest, and he's also quite big. So he's an easy target for Roy. You know that he wants to chase you down. You know he wants to have preemptive hitboxes. And if you let him, and if you fall victim for those reads, for the hard reads, you will be losing stocks left and right. However, this is Nair's Ridley, so it's not going to be an easy task. And I think that he's going to capitalize a lot more off the edge guard too. You guys have seen how Nair uses the upbeat towards the ledge. It usually works out, but this time that first stock goes off the top. And he's like, screw this, takes off his mask. I want to breathe a little more. <laughs> he won't take his shirt up though, this ain't check. <laughs> Exactamente, exactly. At least, at least not yet. Un saludo para el giorno que me piden. Un saludo. <laughs> Recuerden, we're reading you guys in chat. Los estamos leyendo. Manden sus saludos, manden sus shoutouts. Even careful here because Ridley really wants that pirate rush, but lands on the claw. Those food, those feet, those claws are so sharp, so dangerous that he's just so good at. Now you gotta be extremely mindful still because the difference in percentage is not that great, especially after this insane chase down by Nair. And I think Nair is one of the better players at closing those distances too. Give him mm. one open and you're gonna eat up like 60. Uh, thankfully, Javi is also really good at escaping and with punishing, like here, Nair going for the wrong movement option, eats the forward smash, and now we're back to the same position. But like we said, Nair is very close at, uh, sorry, oh. it's, it's very good at closing these gaps, but twice the space pirate rush does not work. And I thought Javi was gonna go for something else, but he wants to keep his stock in check. Yeah, smart, actually. It's very sensible, but he gets the double-edged oh. dance, not for the finishing hit, which is surprising, considering how lightweight Ridley is, but of course the jab to, to back air is going to seal at least game number one. That was very decisive. Nair feeling uh, maybe a little bit flustered there, but he wants to run it back. So, uh, as you mentioned, taking the mask off, like, just getting some... some oxygen flowing in the in his blood at this point because he knows he's he's fighting against someone that it's really as you mentioned tried and true he's really good solidifies himself as one of the best uh competitors in mexico so he doesn't have an easy task i'm surprised that he's gonna stay as ridley but uh hey trust in his character is always good and great for the heart as well yes sir you have to keep it real and i mean ridley and Nair have a very weird relationship, like Nair has constantly thought of dropping a character or at least goes through certain seasons where he won't touch him and okay. then goes back. It really is a matter of, okay, did Nair wake up feeling good with Ridley or is he going to drop it? So, feeling good right now, at least for wow. this second game, look at that push! <laughs> yeah, he knows, and that's the thing. He, despite the fact that Roy can obliterate Ridley, once he gets the reads, once he gets the ledge trumps, the, the, the edge guarding, Ridley has a great opportunity against Roy. Roy doesn't have the best recovery, so maybe even a Gimp would be enough to get insanely fast stocks. However, it was just neutral, it was just rushed down, what allowed Nair to get at least the lead for the first time in the set. And also the fact that Hobby has now been adapting a lot more to things like the side B. Oh my lord! But this is where Nair truly <laughs> shines. He is unpredictable. So many people have told me, dude, uh, I can't tell when Nair is going to whiff one out or, you know, right. go for that forward smash. Also, Ridley leans back, so if you're trying to attack him, yes. he's going to, you're going to miss. Because he is moving backwards, that hurtbox is shifting. And so, Nair really does have a lot to win whenever he goes for a forward smash. It's relatively, well, it's quite safe if you're trying to tag. Wow. Look at that! Also, <laughs> Javi was charging his own! What yeah, this? yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he felt like like he felt himself a little too much. I would say that was super risky considering how Ridley can just explode on your face. However, he felt confident enough, or comfortable rather, but it didn't pay off in the end. So now Nair has a clear lead at this point, a full stock. He's still holding that middle stage and forcing uh, Javi onto the side of the stage. However, is still chasing down, and I think I think Nair is actually being a little bit more patient, more reactionary. He's waiting for an option and he's punishing accordingly. 
Absolutely. He has to read his opponent out. And, you know, with these two having such a history, I think by now they know certain habits. They still mm. know how to play Unpredictable, of course. But it's a right. lot more with Punish, I think. These games have become a lot more of Bait and Punish. And, uh, you know, that's also in the nature of these players, right? They have such a good mm -hmm. neutral that they have wow. to be very, very careful with whiffing. And in this case, Nair calculates his forward tilt perfectly. That's the game. Lacuna gets the shot just like that, getting the greatest range that you can get with that uh, with that hitbox, putting Nair in a really comfortable situation now. And I'm speaking about psychologically because game one was a bit commanding uh, for Javi, but it, it just turned around for this game too. So that shows insane levels of adaptation by Nair. He knows what he has to do. He executed them flawlessly, I dare say, in this game. In this game number two. So now it's it's Javi's turn to readapt, readjust, and try to bring the set back. And also remember that Javi has a pretty vast array of characters mm -hmm. as well. If Roy Plus doesn't Yastric. work, he can switch it out. But you know. I have seen him play a lot more Roy today, so perhaps he is going solo. I don't know the character he played in the entire tournament, of course, but at least from the few ones I saw before this block, he was playing Roy. So yeah, he must be feeling himself today, but he is getting close to getting a push a little too far away. Thankfully, he ripped that up B soon enough. And you know, funnily enough, I think it makes sense. Just like that, once he gets a string, he's going to take True. stocks. And it's important to understand that even though he can be gimped, he can be uh, destroyed by a bad recovery or a good edge guard from, uh, from Nair, he still has the best tool, which is the hilt of the Binding Blade to just destroy Ridley, even at obnoxious low percentages. So it's, it's a bit of a gamble, but it's definitely paying off, at least in this game is. No, definitely. I think that Nair, especially being such an explosive character, can go either way as well. Uh, much like Roy, uh, or sorry, Nair being an explosive player at that. Uh, mm -hmm. Nair is as explosive as a player as Roy is a character. So yeah, you can expect these stocks to fly off real fast. Oh no, that was a mistake. Yep, <laughs> that was totally a miss in, but I think Hobby just wanted to get him off, but he didn't realize he was not gonna land on stage. I mean, at least he got a couple slices from the double-edged hand, so it's something, but look, careful here, because the pirate rush, ooh, uh, look yeah. at him, He's, he loves to get those, and once, and once he does, it's gonna be extremely scary, he has condition, I dare say, with that move he just did, he reminded Javi that that is, not an, that is an option, so he needs to be extra careful when it comes to recovering if he doesn't want to get spiked by that Ridley upbeat. Yeah, that was the one I was talking about right at the beginning of the set. Nair is such a fan of getting those spikes with it. It's pretty much impossible mm -hmm. to return unless you're Bayonetta or something. Mm -hmm. And even then, it depends on the percent if you don't want to go directly to the bottom blast zone. So Javi, more than wary of it. And now he is back to doing what he does best. Play a good neutral and whiff punish. But he is setting him up himself, <laughs> bud. For a sick edge guard. Won't happen, though. And Nair is still on the center station. So this fight is going to be pretty eternal. It's, a, it's amazing how they're just going back to back. Game one was super uh, one-sided on Javi's favor. Then game two is now it was was sided by uh, for uh, for Nair, but now it's the other way around. Now it's Javi once again in the reins of the truck. But look, this time it's a little different. Even though Nair has insane rage, I'm uh, sorry, uh, percentage on him, it's really he doesn't really need much to lose that stock, especially against Roy. Just like that, gets the backer once again. He could have had an opportunity, that's the thing. Ridley could get you off stage. Roy, for extremely obnoxious percentages. Yes, sir. It, did, and it didn't happen, though. <laughs> well, uh, but the... Well, let's just say the message is there, right? Like Right, right. It, he, he went... Um, he is going off on a tangent with certain moves to kind of say, hey, this might happen, buddy, and you better be careful with it. Of course, yep. that just adds to the fear. And a lot of people think of Smash as a conversation. I think that's part of a conversation too, just to make sure that your opponent knows who they're dealing with. Right. Yeah, you know that you have to respect their options, especially now that Nair um, just showed it, right? He reminded Harry that that's an opportunity for him to take if, if it's granted. So it's, it's important to understand that now it's Nair's, Nair's turn, turn to just bring it back you know we've seen it before the commanding the commanding game the commanding victories the commanding chase down which is something that is really good in this case for Nair he's struggling a little bit there with his mask but we're going to Kalos Pokemon League these lateral platforms could be very important for Nair in this match 
Yes, sir. Uh, actually, I see Nier coming here a lot as a counterpick, so mm. no surprises there. And I don't know if Hobby is that used to playing against there in this station in particular, because he does have some sick tricks oh. up his sleeve, namely that up B into the ledge. I don't know what is what it is about this station in particular, but he gets so many of those here. Yeah, maybe just the angle rather that they can't they can't like oh no complicated situation there for a Nier, but maybe the fact that they can't just like hug the ledge as much, um, it, it, it's, it might make it easier for Ridley to go for those spikes with the up B, so it's understandable, right? But um, still something that we haven't seen so far, he was looking for it, but he didn't get it, and now happy with a clear lead at least uh, at this point. So, I don't know, it's it's a bit of a comfort pick for Nair, I have to agree, but Javi's just taking advantage of it as well and doing amazing so far. Yes, I agree, Javi is the one with the upper hand here because he is more so focused on catching Nair whenever he's trying mm -hmm. to get back on stage. Look at that. I mean, look at how long Nair spends off stage whenever he is trying to recover. <laughs> and yeah. then going back to center, Javi is so quick to pull the trigger on the grab and step. But finally, an option out of shell is going to take it. Um, he does overextend sometimes, so Nair is good at catching that. Yeah, also a lot of smash covers insane, uh, insane True. amount of options. Huge. If you jump, if you roll, you're still gonna get caught, especially uh, understanding how it works. Nair is just a specialist uh, to some degree of this character, so it's important that he takes advantage of those situations. However, this is potentially Nair's last stock in this in this tournament, rather, because remember, we're in loser semis. It's, it is a best of five, and, but this is the only opportunity that Nair has in order to bring the set back. But just having not making it any easier, despite the constant barrage of attacks that Nair is putting out. And of course, when you now are aware of that up smash, when he tries to get down from the platforms, for instance, I think he's going to be a lot more careful. Look at that. I mean, he prefers yep. to just stay on shield instead of going to that platform. I mean, I think of, of that up smash kind of like Terry's... Uh, power gazer sometimes because of the huge range it has and how far it can send you so yeah you have to play as safe as possible around it and now Javi trying to get the confirm also it, very important for that um, to, to see that Javi always going for the jab into back here he just wants the safest option possible it costs the stock though yeah, it's doable for Nair at this point, but it's really rough. He needs to really avoid the hilt of the Binding Blade at this point. With those chase downs that we've seen, oh, the camera, Javi's camera just died, but hey, a Gimp opportunity that Nair barely misses, uh, respecting a little too much. Maybe not wanting to lo lose uh, his stage control, which is completely understandable, but things are even at this point, Tune. So it's one hit, and it's the only opportunity that Nair has, and he takes it with it back here. What a beautiful, beautiful opportunity for him to take. Vamos a juego numero cinco. An amazing stock from Nair. I hope he can ride that momentum to the next game, because really, most of that match was looking in favor of Javi. Oh, not gonna mm -hmm. lie, I mean, he does find the good conversions, of course. He is Nair, after all. <laughs> but he was struggling quite a bit, and this was his counter pick. Wherever you send Javi, he is going to be comfortable. That's the lesson here. And now he also has a counter pick, so it's a pretty good situation for him right now. Exactly, and, and this is a trend that we've seen. Javi taking game one, Nair taking game two, Javi taking game three, and it is now Nair's opportunity to take game four. Now, this is the decisive one. If the pattern continues, this means that Javi will take the game. However, I don't think that Nair is really okay with that trend, so he will be on the lookout to break it. I would love to see the kind of play, the chase down that he got on game two, but Javi has been super patient and super aggressive getting every single hit in when it counts the most. Absolutely. Javi, one of those players who, well, much like Cloudy was doing so earlier with Joker, he also tries to push the advantage state as far as possible. And mm -hmm. with the advantage state also getting stage control, because it's not like he's just going to juggle you. That is, of course, important. You're going to get a lot of percent out of it. But also push your opponent as far as possible. That's why he keeps setting this up. This specifically get Nair onto a situation where he has to commit to an option to, you know, maybe get up a tag or something, and then you react to it. It's so great for him to get Nair there. 
Yeah, and now that we're in Pokemon Stadium 2, a stage that a lot of people consider neutral, which I uh, not disagree, but uh, I think it's there's better stages for it. I disagree a little bit. Uh, Pokemon Stadium 2 shouldn't be a uh, starter stage, but it's it's neutral in certain in certain matchups, right? Depending a lot in, in if they can reach those upper uh, those platforms that are their height are a little bit more um, more higher. That sounds that sounds weird. But uh, for example, Falco struggles to get smash attacks consistently, a lot of characters do struggle with those platforms. So their playstyle is going to be super important against the rush, but doesn't get the stock quite yet and Javi returns safely. Toon Laguna, what would you do if you were Javi in order to secure the stock in, for this game number five? Secure would, the game, rather. I would do jab and then back here. <laughs> well, just... I think I think that's the one that we can learn from him, right? That's his favorite conversion and, he, and it has given him a lot of stocks, but in terms of stage control, I think he is putting his guard down quite a bit, constantly going to the platforms, and that's never a position that you want to be in. The platforms in Ultimate are a trap, people. Don't go on the platforms. That's disadvantage automatically, almost. <laughs> unless you're a, t a character that really doesn't care about those platforms. Of course, your reach can go beyond that, but it's really, really complicated. And now Hobby is playing a lot more grounded, and look where he has an air. Oh no, but he trains! <laughs> Dude, I thought he was gonna get spiked, but no, he was ready for it, trying to challenge, and it was on his favor. Beautiful display there for Nair, the patience, and working out, mixing up, and adding a little bit of spice, you know, the aggression at the last second to trade in his favor. Now the lead is clear. So far, Javi is struggling to get something started, and as you mentioned, landing on those platforms allows your opponent to shark you. And what, what kind of shark are you not if you're not Nair with his Ridley, those fangs are absolutely devastating. Gets one more stock on his opponent. Yes, sir, and that stock might just be the last one for Hobby to. I mean, remember, this is loser side. Whoever wins is going up against Kaije, but whoever loses is ending his run in fourth place. And careful, Nair, you're going too deep, but also he realizes that Hobby can't really commit. He can just stall here. Look at that. Nair is more than willing to stay here as long as possible. He is re-grabbing the ledge, but Javi just doesn't want to go in because he knows he's going to trade against the up B. Being so early on the stock, I don't think it's that bad, but, you know, he doesn't want to go there for a reason. El there miedo, el planking ass. Nair just holds that ledge down for what? A whole minute almost? But now it's Javi's opportunity to get something started here as he holds the ledge. But, oh, is he trying? Dude, is Nair trying to cheese? Javi at this point? Is he trying to get him with a pirate rush by the ledge? Do you think he can get that away with that? Weird, because he's winning, <laughs> but he just... Right? He, he, might, he might want to win in style. That's also possible. I mean, yeah, Nair... Like, yeah, exactly. He wants Nair clips to get some content. So he's just <laughs> saying, hey, dudes, ready with that clip button. I'm going to cheese Javi. You need to tweet. <laughs> exactly. And that's why Javi has been respecting it. And and maybe you can you can attribute it this uh, you can attribute this to the fact that that Nair was just holding that ledge, but in a really good way. Not a lot of characters, not a lot of competitors are able to allow themselves to plank for as long as he did without getting punished with a re grab. But look, Javi's patience is paying off slowly, little by little. That threshold is getting even smaller and look at him go with the strings no please don't get the full string what an absolute display from javi evening things out in a blink of an eye you don't just disrespect him like that he knows that yes. planking was on purpose but careful he is on a very tight spot here and look at there he's more than ready to just let it rip once again the forward smash is such a great option it might not connect every time but it's the conditioning too and now javi Makes it back, doesn't want to go on the platform, he has now learned, you can't go in there, he Ooh. misses, he whips the up smash, dear lord, these guys are so close from taking stock from each other, Nair gets the tech, and they're back on the ledge fighting for center stage control, they're so even, sir, but that's gonna do it, the backer will finish it. It's heartbreaking, te rompe el corazón, cause Nair had such great momentum, such great display of skill, especially as he planked by the ledge, but Javi was having none of it. Dijo, no ni man, yo no quiero irme así. He was patient enough. He was conscious, conscious enough to be mindful of how he was going to approach, taking the game, taking the set, absolute display of raw skill and knowledge of the, of the